Now for this part of the question, we're asked to find the position vectors of P and Q after time T hours. And what I've done is I've just added on the initial position vectors of P and Q at 2 p.m. That's when the time T I've set as zero. So we're told that P has position vector I plus J, which I've marked in as the coordinate 1, 1, I plus J. And similarly for Q at 2 p.m. when time T is zero, Q's at the point with position vector minus 2J. So you can see I've gone two units down here. OK, so with that marked on, let's mark on the velocity vectors for P and Q. So if we start with P, the velocity of P is going to be a vector like this, 2i minus 3j. And for Q, we've got 3i plus 4j. So when it comes to working out these position vectors after time t hours, if we start with the path that P takes, it's going to be a path along here. So the position vector of P, say after t hours, let's say P is at this point here after t hours, then we're talking about this vector from here to here. That's the vector we're going to call P. I'll just underline it there. OK, so to get P, we should be familiar with this. If not, I'll just run through at the end, towards the end of this video, why it's so. But to get P, P is equal to, well, you have to go to your starting point followed by T amounts of this velocity vector. And our starting point is going to be the vector 1, 1. In other words, I plus J. You can write it as a column vector or you can write it in terms of i and j. I'm sure it doesn't matter. So we go from the origin then to our starting point and then we follow it with t lots of the velocity vector 2 minus 3. As I say, if you're unsure of why that's so, well, all you've got to do is see it like this. Because if we take that velocity vector p, we know that when t equals 0, it's at this point here. And if you put t equals 0 in here, you're just left with p equaling 1, 1, that position vector. After one hour, when t equals 1, it'll be up to there, followed by one lot of the vector 2 minus 3. So it'll just be 1, 1 plus one lot of 2 minus 3. After two hours, what would be the position vector of p? Well, this is... After one hour, it'd be here. After two hours, it would be at about this point here. So it'd be up there, 1, 1, plus two lots of this vector, 2 minus 3, and so on. So that's the general rule of how you find the position vector of something after a time t. Go to the starting point, and then t lots of your velocity vector. So... We can then just move on now and get, by a similar method, the position vector of Q after time t. Q is going to be moving up here. It's going to be following this particular path. And the position vector of Q after time t, let's say Q is up here somewhere at time t. We'll call that vector Q, OK? So to get Q, what we've got to do is just simply say that Q equals to your starting point, which was this one here, 0 minus 2. So you've got 0 minus 2. And then plus T amounts of the velocity vector for Q. The velocity vector was 3, 4. So T lots of 3, 4. OK, so you can either leave it like this in column vector form, or you could write it in i's and j's. If you did, then you've got 1i plus 2ti. So you could say 1 plus 2ti. And for the j components, you've got 1 minus 3t in the j direction. So that's 1 minus 3t in the j direction. And as for q, well, that's going to be 
0 plus 3t in the i direction, or just simply 3t i. And for j, it'll be minus 2 plus 4t. Or you could write it as 4t minus 2 in the j direction. Okay, so that's parts 1 and 2 then.